Good afternoon to you. Mark Sadath, HurricaneTrack.com here with your off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for the 25th day of May 2017, second one this week. I wanted to update you on a couple of things. First of all, the NOAA, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Hurricane Outlook, has been released, and they are looking at above normal as the likely scenario of happening this season. I'm going to break this down in much more detail in a week on the special day one broadcast that I'm going to do on the first day of hurricane season. But if we scroll through this real quick, go to their chart, they're looking at uh, more than likely an above normal season, uh, 11 to 17 named storms. Out of those named storms, 5 to 9 becoming hurricanes. And out of those hurricanes, 2 to 4 becoming major hurricanes, which are category 3 or higher. And we can see the pie chart over here that uh, the probability of an above normal season is highest of all the three different possibilities. It's not a lot, but enough so that that's what they're going with. And they cite different um, parameters, mainly the non-existent or weak El Nino, which is one of the biggest aspects that I have been focusing on over the last few weeks and months and they're looking at you know maybe warmer temperatures in the Atlantic and we've talked about that as well but again just you know really want to kind of tease this now and we'll talk about it more in a week how about that because I want to lump it in with the other forecasts that have come out and then try to understand what the consensus is and why everyone thinks what they think. So instead of just looking at one or two, we're going to look at several of them. Colorado State, North Carolina State, Florida State, uh, Joe Bastardi, uh, even Jim Williams from Hurricane City, and just kind of get an idea from your powerhouse, big name professionals, so to speak, to the lesser known entities that are making these forecasts. But uh, for now, there you have it. Looks like an above normal season headed our way. And this is part of the reason why, in the update today that just came out this afternoon, sea surface temperature anomalies, uh, we now have some cooler anomalies coming up here in the eastern side of the tropical Pacific. And overall, it doesn't look like we're going to have an El Nino affecting the season ahead. And I have talked about that ad nauseum by now, right? Uh, and then through here, this almost horseshoe shape in the Atlantic Basin, colder water in the subtropics to the north, uh, and this just keeps getting warmer and warmer overall. Uh, so, hey, it could be a very interesting season ahead. Uh, and again, I'll caution you already, all of the forecasts and outlooks and parameters suggesting that we could have a busy season in terms of what the numbers are, there's just no way to know with any degree of accuracy that I am aware of now, and some people might argue, but where they're going to end up, right? We just don't know that, what the steering pattern. And we can look at 2010 as a great example where we had plenty of activity, but not a single hurricane hit the United States that year. So you never know. Um, and we'll get a better idea of the steering patterns as the summer goes on. But you know, just real quick, a couple of things to point out on the anomaly chart. The Gulf of Mexico has a few positive anomalies showing up again. This has been waxing and waning uh, different weather systems coming across and the heavy rainfall, but the Gulf will always be plenty warm, as I allude to often in my updates here. Caribbean above normal. And then this really stands out, the main development region. So we could, could be seeing some long track hurricanes this year, where we have, like Matthew, was well, generally a long track, although it didn't really get started until about here. Uh, the models indicated it starting you know, fairly soon. Uh, and we may see some of that, maybe something like Ivan again, in terms of a long track hurricane or Isabel. You never know. It's the setup. Uh, one thing I will point out, again, this colder water relative to average north of the warmest of water should result in a more classic hurricane season. If it will or will not, we'll have to just wait and see. But at least we know that it looks like the stage is set. And a broader view, I wanted to make sure I put this in today, you can clearly see the equatorial Pacific uh, compared to the Atlantic. The Atlantic MDR is warmer overall 
than the equatorial Pacific, no doubt about it. And so that in itself should raise a few eyebrows. <coughs> oh, pardon. So, yeah. Uh, and we'll be watching, speaking of coughing, the African dust outbreaks, uh, Saharan air layer, those intrusions will come off Africa. There's going to be a lot that we keep up with during the season. It's not here yet, about a week to go, and then we'll dig into all those tools. Um, this is an interesting chart that uh, there's several of them out there. Uh, and I want to point your attention to this one down here. This is the subsurface again. And uh, this was updated on the 21st. And this is more buoy data driven from the Tao, Tao, however you say that, uh, data array, the buoys that are out there. Um, and there's been some talk about getting rid of them. Uh, but I don't really do politics here. So, yeah, if it directly affects what we do. Then I think we can talk about it. But the possibility of something happening, I don't want to get into it because you just never know. But these are important, right? And that shows us uh, this chart. Again, this is the surface. This is 500 meters deep. And, uh, you know, you got this warm anomaly a little bit over in the East Pacific. But then look at this pretty large area of cold anomalies. Uh, so we'll see when the other version of this gets updated. I can't remember precisely what it's called, but you know the one where it shows the subsurface outlines and the different isotherms or lines of equal temperatures like this one, uh, that'll get updated and we'll see how it matches up. There's always different data sets and different ways to display data. Uh, but this anomalies is like, you know, that's what we try to watch. And look at that, a pretty large area of cold anomalies on this particular chart here, updated on the 21st, so just a few days ago. And we'll see. Maybe that'll pop its way up to the surface at some point. And maybe that's what the Australian Bureau of Meteorology that their POEMA model is seeing for the 3-4 area of El Nino or the Enso region. Look at this. A dip below zero. You know, the average, right? Not zero degrees, but the, uh, what would you, just average, right? Below average. I'm trying to figure out if there's a better way to say that. Uh, that's different. That's that's a change. So it shows us below uh, basically a cold neutral signal, um, not quite to La Nina, but hey, some of the ensemble members here, I'm kind of drawn outside of them, don't mean to do that, are into La Nina territory. So the Australian Poema model is definitely the coldest of the group right now, but that's a pretty significant little dip heading into the hurricane season, and this is the window that we are most interested in right through here, this time frame, and the Poema model showing at about 0.4 below average. Ah, that would be interesting, a cold average. So again, the idea of an El Nino this year for the hurricane season, uh, we're just getting closer and closer to zero in my opinion. Anything happening in the near future? I just wanted to kind of end with this. And we're almost there. It's almost hurricane season, and we start looking at the Madden-Julian oscillation, which is sort of a fancy way of saying uh, a period of fertility, so to speak, in the tropics for cyclogenesis. And, you know, we talk about Mother Nature and all that, and it, it kind of works that way. And you have areas where there's no chance for development, and then you have these time periods where you have a window of opportunity for something to develop. Uh, it's interesting how the whole cycle of life thing works with animals, and then sometimes in the weather it can be similar, sort of analogous, right? And we look at the Madden-Julian oscillation, the period of time when upward motion or tropical convection is more likely, and we typically watch in these phases right through here for Atlantic development for the most part, and when you see the Madden-Julian oscillation over here, no matter which model set, and this is the GFS and its ensemble group, uh, basically looking at this, it tells me that the Atlantic and the Eastern Pacific are not favorable right now. That's the bottom line. I should have just said that to start, right? And the European model uh, is the same, for the most part, in showing that it's not over here for now. In fact, the Madden-Julian oscillation kind of amplifies out across the Indian Ocean through the maritime continent region that would be uh, generally your Indonesia area and that part of the world and maybe going from there around we'll see it's, this is a difficult phenomenon to explain to people 
That's why I like to basically simplify it and say it's like a period of fertility in the tropics. Um, you know, it is, because once you get it in your region, again, that window of opportunity opens. It doesn't necessarily mean something will develop, but the Madden-Julian oscillation helps because it promotes wider spread, upward motion, and the fostering of thunderstorms in the atmosphere. So we'll see. I want to get my other graphic here. Is it in there? Yeah, there it is. So don't forget, a week from today, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Thursday, June 1st, 7 o'clock on YouTube Live, and it will be on our Facebook Live as well. We figured out how to do that. I'll talk about this much more on Monday, and uh, I hope you can tune in. It'll be a really, I think, a, a neat broadcast, and uh, probably an hour to an hour and 30 minutes at the most. And that's the good thing, is we can go as long as we need to. Um, you know, I'll have a set presentation. I'm not just going to ramble, but... You know, we're not up against any clock, so it takes as long as it takes. Uh, you know, those old party flyers from college that said, party tonight, 9 p.m. until, and then there's just a question mark? <laughs> well, that's what this will be like, except not so much a party atmosphere, but much more serious. I'm going to show you some of the technology that we use and the evolution of such. We will talk about the seasonal forecasts, and I'll address the issue of how useful are they. You definitely have one group of people that can't stand them. They say they are completely useless and they don't serve the public in any real way. I, I, while I see their point of view, I disagree. I think you have to start somewhere, and I'm already getting into it. But we'll talk about that, and then we'll talk about some of the things that you could expect if you're going to get hit by a hurricane. Again, I've been in... Uh, 25 to 30 of them. I guess I need to narrow that number down to a specific one. It's been 20 years and there have been a lot of hurricanes, so uh, I don't remember. It's 25 to 30, something like that, and pretty much every one of them on purpose. And so I have seen a thing or two, and I want to make sure I can convey my experiences to help you uh, better understand what you might be up against if something comes your way. And uh, I don't even mean just the eye hitting you either. There's peripheral effects, and we're going to talk about all of that. So that's this uh, a week from today, this coming Thursday. It's already Thursday, so next Thursday, June the 1st, 7 o'clock Eastern Time on YouTube Live and our Facebook Live. And everything's Hurricane Track, so you can find us just by searching Hurricane, T-R-A-C-K, all one string. Twitter, YouTube, subscribe on YouTube. And on Facebook, make sure you have the notifications on that when Hurricane Track is live, you get notified. That's important, and you probably have to like the page again or something so that their algorithms will pick it up. It's, it's all complicated, I'm sure, but you want to make sure you know when we're doing something, right? So just make sure you stay engaged, and you'll be up to date with the very latest. All righty, well, again, just a quick update here, kind of putting the NOAA thing out there, the first governmental official look from the you know NOAA at what's happening, and we'll have several more coming out over the next week. And then a week from today, we'll talk about it in depth. Have a great rest of your Thursday. Thanks, as always, for tuning in to hear me. And you'll see me next Thursday. I think it'll be nice. You'll like it. All right? Uh, I am Mark Sutteth, HurricaneTrack.com. Again, thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you again on Monday.